Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to do a review on the Coyote CK2610 with my new friend Larry. And Larry's also got a YouTube channel called Full Circle Ozarks, and he's had this tractor a couple years. He's put 400 hours on it, and we're going to run it, actually do some work, and then we're going to give kind of a review from a first-time user and a long-time user. Sound like a plan. All right, so I'm gonna give some of my thoughts on the operator station, then I'll get with Larry and give kind of his overall view of someone who's put 400 hours on this instead of 30 minutes. But I definitely, I like the, the two pedal system. I've always said that. I'm not, from an ergonomic standpoint, I'm not crazy about having the brake on the same side as your your forward and reverse pedals. I like that better on the other side. And I like, I, I'm not crazy about the fact that you, you kind of need two feet to set the emergency brake. Those are kind of minor concerns, really. A lot of the ergonomic stuff isn't as much of the deciding factor to me as how much work you can get done. But it operated smoothly. Joystick placement's comfortable. These, the two button system, which is what I would term a true third function rather than a, a diverter very convenient location it's much simpler and easier to operate the grapple than it is on mine nice roomy operator station very convenient getting on and off it's got a nice step comfortable to operate this it feels like when i let off the pedal 
And I think it's a difference which, about my tractor because this is about the third time I've ran another tractor and said this, but when I let off this pedal, the machine wants to keep going a lot more than mine. Mine's very abrupt. Like when you let off that pedal, it stops like immediately. So that amount of coast might be a preference thing, but I'm seeing this, the way this one is, as being more common. Before we get into the full review, a couple of other features I forgot to mention. It does have an adjustable seat. Mine does not. That's a very nice feature. It feels pretty comfortable. And I always like to look at the three-point setup. This has a nice heavy drawbar. It does not have extendable draft arms. And the stabilizers are the turnbuckle style. It's got a convenient fuel fill location at the back up high. That's where mine is. I really like that. This exact same frame is used on the, the 3510 and the 4010 and several different models, and it's just a different engine. All right, so I'm going to finish my thoughts on the tractor, and then we'll get all of Larry's. So I always compare to mine as a point of reference because my tractor list weight is like 2,500 pounds. The way I have it configured, it's like 5,500 pounds with wheel weights, the cab, fluid in the tires, three-point attachments, backhoe subframe. I have it weighed down, so it's a heavy tractor, but it's significantly smaller than this. The rear tires are much smaller. The frame is just overall smaller. Now this is 25 horsepower, whereas mine's 38, but it doesn't feel that way when you run it. When I was pushing those logs, with your weight and your horsepower, it pushed them just fine. The lift capacity is higher than mine, even though I have a lot more horsepower. Do you happen to know your hydraulic flow rate? 11.7 gallons per minute hydraulic flow. Sometimes that's confusing because part of that goes to steering and part of it goes to your implement, but it has more hydraulic flow than my tractor, and I'm guessing it was cheaper. Do you know what the price of just the tractor is on this? I don't know what the current price is. Uh, it was when I when I bought this one. I I bought it as in a package deal with, uh, and I got a got a really good deal on it during COVID. I'll, I'll just say it that way. <laughs> so mine was like twenty six thousand two and a half years ago, and now it's listed at like thirty three thousand for just the tractor. I'm thinking my package was I think seventeen thousand. So that's a dramatic difference, and for the jobs I would do every day, the majority of them, this tractor is going to do them at least as well for a lot less money. There are little things I like better about mine, but I'm impressed with this. Of any, I've ran a few 25 horsepower tractors, and to me, this is the most capable of those. So, what are your thoughts about why you bought the Coyote, and now 400 hours later, would you do it again, and just overall review on it? I, I definitely would do it again. Uh, the primary reason I bought this one, amongst the other brands that I looked at, cost was a factor, but the lift capacity on the front end was important. Uh, I liked the idea that I could go with a 25 horse engine and it was it would be uh, non-emissions. That was that was important to me. Uh, it, it wouldn't be a deal maker if I had to do a regen, but. Uh, that was that was the primary reason. The the only thing that I probably would add to this tractor if I was going to do it again would be some rear remotes. This one tractor doesn't have them, and I may add them eventually. Uh, but uh, that's probably about the only thing that I would add. And so this has a 1,800 pound listed lift capacity. Mine when I bought it was much lower. I don't remember 1,300 something. But I switched the mechanical self-leveling loader. I can get 1,700 to 1,800 pounds an inch off the ground, depending on how far out it's extended. But the lift capacity on a lot of the other manufacturers is better, and Coyote is one of the higher ones. Yeah. One thing I would do if this was my tractor, and we'll tell that story real quick, but I would definitely get some more weight on it. It felt, whenever I picked those logs up, it lifted the back quicker than mine would have. <laughs> And he's he's got a box blade on the back, which isn't the heaviest of three-point attachments. Yeah. And he had fluid in the tires, but then he had a tire puncture, and they now don't have fluid in them. Yeah. And he doesn't have the wheel weights. So for my purposes, I'd probably add a little bit of weight. But there's always a trade-off with adding weight because you're sinking and making more tracks in this muddy ground. And every type of way to add weight costs money, which is why he's got a big log strapped to the... 
three and, point. And that that log seems to work pretty well. But again, if you if I hook onto a big sixteen foot log, I, I can feel it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The, the, when the machine has more lift capacity than the weight of the rear end, you get yeah. that. But another thing that took me more getting used to than the tractor was this type of grapple. I've looked at these, but I've never ran one. And this one to me has a little bit of a unique geometry to it that it has. It feels like a clamshell, but then the bottom still comes out quite a bit. Now, for me, it was a little bit awkward. I'm used to driving into it and then closing my jaw. And this, when I drove into it, the jaw wanted to grab the log behind it. So you saw me struggling a little bit with picking those up. It wasn't getting used to the tractor. It was getting used to the <laughs> geometry of the grapple. Yeah. It definitely takes a little bit of uh, getting used to. Uh, but this is a very heavy built grapple. You said this weighs like six or 800 pounds? Yeah. I believe it's like closer to 800 pounds. So, so that that was that was why it's important to get a tractor that could lift. But, but again, primarily I was using it to lift logs from my sawmill. Yep. So 400 hours. What kind of breakdowns or problems have you had with the machine? Haven't had any with the machines other than a hydro, one hydraulic line was leaking at the fitting, and that happened within the first hour of operation. And uh, my uh, my, my folks that I bought, bought it from came came right, right out and, and t took care of that for me. So. so I could tell you things I like about my tractor better than I like this one, but especially when you factor in the price difference and the extra size, I want something a little bigger. I I think this is a heck of a bargain for what you get for the what you pay for it. Yeah. And I really appreciate you taking time to show us. You're quite welcome. Make sure to check out Larry's channel. It's Full Circle Ozarks. I appreciate you taking time to watch. Put links on the screen to more of our videos, and we'll see you next time. Take care.